Okay, folks, this is a tutorial that folk have been asking me for for a long, long time, and the day has finally come, okay? So sorry that you've had to wait for so long. Um, this is going to be a series. I don't know how many videos long, but I'm going to show you how to make a game like Football Manager. Now, it's not going to be exactly like Football Manager. I'm not going to be coding a match engine, okay? But what you will see by the end of this project is you'll have a menu system that you can navigate through. We'll have players that are randomly generated. Um, we'll have clubs that we can add into a league system, which that league system will uh, generate a round-robin style um, tournament. We'll then have a league table, which will be updated with all the points of the teams. We'll be able to simulate each match week and... By the end of the tutorial, we'll take in different things like stats for each player, um, home ground advantage stats, home ground capacity stats, to churn out some sort of a wee calculation which simulates each match individually. Um, so no match engine involved. So if you're looking for a match engine through this tutorial series, you're better looking elsewhere because it's far too complex and I'm not going to be covering that. But if you want to see how to make a really cool Football Manager style menu system um, with random players and some calculations and setting up a tournament. And this is a tutorial for you. I'm going to do it all through Unity. And this is episode one, so this is primarily going to be setting up the user interface, showing you a sort of structure of what scripts that we're going to need. Um, and by the end of this tutorial, you're going to have a user interface like this, which these are all hard-coded values, but we'll be able to navigate through. So we can click a club here to go and view its details, and then we can see the details on that club, um, and then, oh, there's a lot of James Wintons, um, and then we can click on James Winton to find more details about his stats. There is a wee fix that I put at the end that I had to actually film after doing the bulk of the tutorial, um, so please, if you wouldn't mind, stick around to the end of the video just so that you get that fix in there, because that's going to help you um, build out this project so it looks exactly what, like what I've just shown you here. So, looking forward to it, let's get started. So, this is a brand new Unity project using Unity 2021. However, any Unity version will work for this tutorial. Okay, so let's get started here. The first thing that I'm going to do is set up my folder structure. Well, we've got here the folder for scripts, and this is going to hold all of our scripts. So, please just take a note here of the um, folders that we've got. I'll zoom in for a little bit so you can see easier. So we've got controllers, data models, enums, interfaces, UI and utilities. Okay, and I've just I went through the, the pain here of creating the user interface for this game. So you can see here we've got all our pages and I'll put this on GitHub so you can download the actual starting point of the project and just get started on creating the actual simulation of the game. And um, this setting up of these elements is quite long and tedious, took me quite a while. So um, if it's something you'd like to learn though in the future, just let me know and I can make a separate tutorial on that. However, for this series, this is all about creating Football Manager, so I'm not going to spend too long footering about with user interfaces. Right, so we're going to need some prefabs here, so I'm going to create a new folder. I've got prefabs, and we'll take the league standing, make a prefab out of that, and then we're also going to need the results. We'll take the result, put that there, and we will need the Statistic, basically all the things that we're going to need to recreate for different players or different clubs with different stats. We need the, the roster as well, the player. Okay, so the next thing I need you to do here is go into your utilities folder and add in a new script called link handler. And the code that you want to add into this just now as as following, so we want to implement the I pointer click handler interface here, which will then prompt you to implement this method on pointer click. That essentially registers a click of the mouse. What we then do is we access the link that's within that text, and if there is a link in the text, um, we'll get the link info, we pass it as a string on handle link clicked, and then we've got some logic to implement here which we'll get to in a second um, but right now we just uh, print this out to the console so i'll show you how that works so i have added this into my first league standing which is the very first placed club i know they all look the same and they all 
have the same text, but the very first one at the top here has got in the text component of the team name. So it's got, you'll see, and the inspector. It's got the text mesh pro text, but it's also got our link handler class because I've added it in. If we look here at the text value, it's not just club 1872 United FC, it's enclosed. And if you know HTML, this might look familiar. It's enclosed in a link tab with the value club underscore one. So you can see I've clicked it already, but if I clear that, click the name, and then we can see club underscore one was the link clicked. So we can now use that to access different parts of the interface. And where is this going to be used? You might be asking. So this is going to be used on player. So if you come into your prefabs now, we can set these up. So player name will have this class link handler because we'll be linking from player names. You'll be able to click on the player name from a team, um, for a, from a club or whatever, and go onto that player profile. So we'll have link handler on this player prefab. Result, we'll have it on the team one name and also the team two name. Basically, any instance where we see this, um, we see a team name or a player name, we want to add this click handler just so that we can easily navigate through. Um, and then the original one that I did here was league standing, so we'll add it here. So what I've done there is I went to league standing prefab, added it to team name, added link handler, went to player, found player name, and done the same thing, link handler, and then result, I've added it twice. I've added it to team one name and team two name. I'm now going to implement the logic in the handle link click here, and then I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I've updated this method again here. So what we do now is we take the um, we take this, the link ID and we split it by this slash, and then we check for errors in the formatting. If there's no errors, we carry on. We get the first part of that. So before the slash, that is the type. And then after the slash is going to be the ID. So if you want to navigate to uh, James Woods or whatever, James Woods is a player with the ID 6. It would be player slash 6. If you want to navigate to Rangers FC, which is the club with the ID 25, it would be club slash 25. Sort of like a URL on a web page, if you imagine it that way. So if we come back and I have applied that, so I've updated here the link structure to be a wee bit more simple, wee bit more familiar. So I've updated that in the player name um, here and I've updated that in the um, the, leak, the leak table as well. So I'm just going to click the top team, click the club with the ID one. And I've actually, from copying and pasting, I've logged that as an error. Um, but it's not an error, I'm just telling it to log as an error, but that's good, that's working the way we want it to. We've got no way to navigate the now, so I'm just going to manually um, enable and disable. So again, I manually added this here, this is all going to be dynamic data in the future, but just to make sure we've got everything set up, this should say player with ID 1, and it does. So now we can recognise what's a player and what's a club, and that is done by this link value here in our player uh, where is it? Player text has got a link value. So I just said that we can't navigate. We need to be able to navigate. And that is the next thing that we're going to do. So for navigation, first of all, I need you to add a new game object. We call it controller. And this is going to hold all of the management scripts, all the controllers. This is fairly common practice. You're then going to add a UI manager script here and add it onto your controller. Then stay in your scripts, but go to user interface. We're going to add four new scripts. Okay, we're going to add one script for each of these pages. So each page is going to have its own script that manages it. Putting in these scripts, and now they're empty, but add them to each of your, your different pages here. So under uh, club details, we'll add club details. Player details, we'll add player details. And fixture list, we'll add fixture list. So now, and I've added home as well, I've added home page UI. So now, oh, I fucked these names up. So I'm going to rename that just so I don't get annoyed. Right, catastrophe over just a wee naming convention that I knackered up there. But we're all good now. So we want to now go through all of our new UI um, scripts, or four new ones, so home page, and we want to implement 
the singleton pattern. So the singleton pattern, pattern basically is you have a public static instance of the class. So this class is homepage UI, just call it instance. So what this is going to do is it's going to um, assign this instance value to this instance of the homepage UI. What this in short means is it's shorthand means we can easily get access to say the homepage UI scripts from another script. And we can do this because we're only ever going to have one homepage UI instance here. It'd be different if we had 20 players running around each with their own player script. We wouldn't use the singleton pattern because we'd have multiple, but we know we've only got one single instance of homepage UI. So this is going to work a treat for us. So do that for homepage UI, fixture list, player details, and the club details. Right, so I've wrote a bit of pseudocode here in this UI manager. First of all, though, what you do want is you want to add reference to all of the UI elements, and then we just assign them here in the um, awake method again, and I've added as well a singleton for the UI manager. But the UI manager is going to be the one manager that basically ties all of these UI elements together. You could imagine it as the manager sitting at the top, and the UI scripts are the wee workers that fiddle around underneath, but the UI manager tells them what to do. These methods don't exist, I've still to implement them, but I want to show you something here that we're going to be writing the same bit of code four times here. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to rewrite code over and over again because it's messy. It means if we want to change one of them, we want them all to act the same. We're changing it in four places as opposed to one. So for that, we're going to need to create a parent class which we can inherit, which will just implement this hide method once. So let's go ahead and do that. Come back into Unity and create UI page. Now, what is UI page going to do? What's well, going to have this hide? So this is how your UI page is going to look. You're going to have show, which just sets the game active, uh, the game object to active, and then we'll call on show, which is a protected virtual, which means we can implement that differently in each of these uh, scripts. So obviously, for player details, when we show, we want to pass in player details to display them, but we want them to be different for club details. So that's where these wee green blobs are going to come into play. But we don't have this data yet. This, that has to come. So now just come into your UI page. We don't need mono behavior because UI page has got it. Home page UI now just inherits from UI page and we can do the same for the rest. Just get rid of mono behavior and then we can save all. Now come back into your UI manager and if you tidy this up, look how clean this is going to look. So hide is going to be the same here, but it's all just going to come from the one bit of code. And then for these methods, you can just use the show function or the show method that we just implemented. That is a lot tidier, a lot less code that we need to write. And now if you come out UI Manager, let's go back into Link Handler. And now we can do some fun stuff. So just above your UI Manager, eh, sorry, your UI Manager, your debug log error, which isn't an error. So we could probably just get rid of that, get rid of error. Um, above your debug log, Add in UI Manager, instance show player details, which is for player, and for club, it's show club details. And if we right click, go to definition, we can see these here. So now, in theory, if we come back in and we keep all of these active, then now, okay, and we'll try this out. Pretty brute force. So let's hide these three. And we've now just got the home page. If I click this one, in theory, that should enable. Shit. And have you spotted my massive mistake yet? Props to you if you have, because it is a massive glaring error, um, which I realized, and it's because we can't access this UI element because it's inactive. So one way we can fix this is instead of setting um, the UI element to inactive here, we can scale it up and down. And this is actually a much better approach to take anyway because the set active, if you're doing it constantly, which for a game like this, you would be doing it constantly, is a lot more um, expensive in terms of your process and power than it is to scale up and down. Um, so we're actually just going to take that approach now. And then one more problem that we can solve here, which I just came across, is take, and your UI manager, take your um, UI instances when you're mapping them here out of awake because I had them in awake and that's causing some issues or it will cause some issues and put them into start so just so we can give these time to initiate now let's come back in and just to test this I'm going to go I'm going to select the three here that aren't home page 
go to scale on the right, just make the X zero, and then click the top one, which has got my link handler. And then we see we go into the club details. If we click James Winton, which is the top one, which I've had and um, coded that link handler on, I've added that through to the, the game object and the inspector. And it takes you onto the player details. And this is very bare bones, as you can see, nothing actually means anything. It's all just placeholder, but that's just how we can navigate through the UI. We'll probably as well, we'll add um, that link handler onto this bit here. But um, that is where I'm going to leave this tutorial. Maybe it went a wee bit longer than it should have. There was a couple of errors there, but we, which we came across in the code. I want you to know that I'm doing this real time as a film as well. This isn't something that I've got built up in the background because I want to share with you some issues that you might come across. If I come across bugs or problems with my code, I want to share it with you real time and then you can see how I go about sorting that. So there was some, some mistakes that I made along the way. I've got a rough plan of how this is going to go. I know how the game is going to look at the end, um, but I'm coding this all in real time. So if you enjoyed this, episode 2 will be along very soon. And please, you would help out the channel a lot by liking, subscribing if you want to see more. Then you'll get access to the rest of this tutorial as soon as it goes live. So cheers, folks, and I'll catch you in part 2. Here's a last wee bit that you might want to add here, which I forgot to show you. So that we're not having to go in the inspector every time we run the game. And your UI manager, just at the end of your start method, just call show home page, okay? And then that means every time we load the game, we will be taken straight to the home page as opposed to having to, you know, hard code values. And then we can just start navigating through there. Cheers! If you found this video useful, please help out my channel by liking and subscribing if you want to see more Unity or game dev related videos. If there's a particular video or tutorial you would enjoy or learn much from, then drop a comment on this video and I'll do my best to respond. Cheers!